Hello watch lovers, friends old and new, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stian and today we're gonna see how to waste money on online markets like eBay. As you might know I like watches and when you like watches you tend to go on that slippery slope of buying more of them. eBay is easily the biggest online market for watches and you can find a lot of really nice watches there. But there are obviously pitfalls. I'm not at all dragging eBay, so uh, before we go into details on these specific watches, just think of this as a cautionary tale. We're going to start this off with a Tissot Sea Star. Now, this uh, dial has been uh, repainted and not very well. You can easily see the white paint around all the dial details. So the dial itself is uh, original, but uh, just a really, really bad uh, repaint uh, job. The rest of the watch seems to be uh, genuine. And when we look inside, we see there is a uh, Tissot movement. So that actually seems uh, okay. The rotor post is, uh, let's say, slightly worn. But we'll just take that as a bonus. This kind of dud should be fairly easy to avoid. But a lot of people buy stuff on their phones nowadays, and if you look at a watch like this on a small screen, then uh, yeah, you might be tricked. So keep that in mind when you look at watches on eBay on your phone. The next watch is a lot less obvious. I'm gonna let you uh, guess in the comment section what's uh, the issue here. We see this is a chronograph, Philippe René. Not a very famous name, but it's a beautiful dial. Case looks all right. See the case back uh, also looks okay. It says Estanco, which is just Spanish for waterproof. And that kind of fits in with a Felipe René uh, branding, I suppose. See the chronograph works. So let's open the case and see if we can find uh, why this watch is a bit of a dud. Inside the watch we find uh, the Venus 188. It's the forerunner to uh, Volvo 7730. And if you remember on the dial it said uh, 17 rubies. But it also said something else that is not in this movement. Let me know in the comments if you spotted it. The next one is uh, maybe difficult to spot as well. It's a Favreluva Sando Twin Power. For some reason these watches seem to be kind of mass produced uh, over in India. But they are also sold, for instance, on Katawiki. I've seen that as well. It's uh, the proper case. And the dial uh, looks very nice, but uh, the font is actually not correct. And inside the watch, what we would expect to find is the Twin Power 259 movement. Looking a little bit more like this. Not like that. This is a single barrel movement. And uh, the Twin Power should have two barrels. Or some might even say it should have twin barrels. Aha! All right, the next one is Jeje uh, Le Coulter, or Jeje Le Coulter, as I like to call it. We see the dial uh, looks uh, very nice. Uh, it actually has a proper dial. The Fabrique en Suisse uh, is something they did put on their dials. So the font and everything is all right, but uh, the hands look a bit uh, fishy. The case looks a bit odd as well. Looking inside the watch, we see it has a beautiful uh, Le Coulter movement. But the case, the hands are simply not correct. And this is not an easy thing to spot. So a lot of people would um, be happy with this watch. In the end, that's of course what we want people to uh, do, to be happy with their watch. But they would likely overpay for this watch. Which I did. 
Learn and Live. The next one is also a Le Couture, supposedly, but that logo uh, font is not correct. And uh, when we turn the watch over on the side, we see there's a big gap between uh, the bezel and the case, and that crown is definitely not uh, Le Couture. It is a 14K gold uh, stamped case, so uh, that's legit. But if we then uh, look inside the watch, we do find the Le Couture movement. So that kind of checks out. But if we look inside the case back, uh, we see something else that doesn't add up. It says Watch Imp Corp. And if this was a genuine Le Coulter, it would have said uh, timed and cased in the USA by Le Coulter. Interestingly, I bought this watch, uh, it's a long time ago, but I bought it from a reputable uh, jeweler on eBay with uh, pretty much close to 100% uh, rating. So, uh, yeah. Next is an IWC. It's vacation! It's vacation! Yeah. It's vacation! <laughs> It's vacation. It's vacation. Apparently it's vacation. Anyway, you see the logo is uh, fine. So the dial is uh, genuine. The problem here is that these little metal spheres that should be uh, marking the minutes are gone. So someone did something. Not really sure what. We also of course see that the crown is not original. But it does have uh, the Calibre 89 inside. So maybe we can sell that for scraps. Or we could try to find a new dial that uh, fits. The next watch uh, is kind of the star of the show, I would say. Apparently it's an Omega Seamaster DeVille chronometer, officially certified. Kind of a pipe hand dial, at least the painting. So could this be a long-lost prototype of an Omega Seamaster DeVille with a constellation kind of writing? Well, probably not. Dad! It is a Seamaster DeVille case, so we're pulling out uh, the split stem, the crown with the female part. And then there's this uh, ring that uh, holds the movement in place. So we have to twist that one and then we can get the movement out. And it turns out the movement is actually a chronometer rated. It is a 551. So uh, the lettering on the dial didn't really lie per se, I suppose. Apart, of course, from uh, Seamaster DeVille not uh, being chronometer rated. As far as I know, at least. The next one is also an Omega. It's a simple uh, dress watch, hand wound, dial looks okay, case looks okay as well. There were some entry level Omegas that were very simple. Inside it we have a 600 series uh, movement, hand wound, so that also uh, checks out. So is there really a problem here then? You tell me, buddy. You've got a problem with this? Well, there is a slight problem if you look inside the case back. Those French words saying uh, carrure lunette placor means that the case and the uh, bezel should be gold plated. So the case back has most likely been uh, changed from a different watch. And yes, this is a very difficult one to spot. And then the last stud from my personal experience, another IWC Calibre 89. And on the plus side, uh, whoever wrote this uh, has very nice handwriting. On the negative side, of course, uh, it's obviously not an original dial. And you do find some uh, relatively hilarious uh, dials out there as well. And it's very difficult to spot these things if you're just sitting on your phone and uh, making purchasing decisions based on uh, small images. So again, don't do that. If you want to buy something, then make sure you look at uh, the images in a good resolution, good size, so that you can avoid some of these studs. The movement is a uh, nice uh, calibre 89, so that's uh, fine. 
So we would have to find a new dial for this watch, but that is very difficult and very expensive. So these were my personal duds. I also uh, did a little bit of research uh, for this video and uh, went to eBay and uh, within three minutes I found some very interesting uh, watches. The first one being a Rolex Marconi. Now Marconi was actually a brand of Rolex, but they never had their Rolex on the dial and it didn't look like this. And uh, if we look at the movement, it should be branded Marconi and not a freshly engraved uh, Rolex. Another watch from the same seller. He has very nice handwriting, but uh, this is not really a bright link. And uh, the same fresh engraving on the movement there as well. So uh, yeah, probably doing good business on that. Another beautiful watch is uh, this uh, Rolex Genève. Not really the best example of a genuine Rolex. And if we look at the movement, it has the same freshly engraved the Rolex and even a crown. Wow. So there's a whole business around this. Separating fools from their money. So don't be one of them. Here we have an Omega Genève, which according to the seller was professionally repainted. I think we can at least agree it was repainted. I especially like that they even painted blue the inside borders of the date window. And then we have a Rolex chronometer, 17 joules. I don't think Rolex ever put 17 joules on their dials, but maybe I'm wrong. But the movement uh, also doesn't really look like a Rolex movement. And the last watch I wanted to show you guys was this uh, Omega with uh, what the seller called a mint dial. And if he by that means the color, then, uh, well, it's not too far from the truth. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then clicking like and subscribe will certainly help the channel. I'll be back with another video shortly. Until then, ta-ta.